and as always well worth a listen with the squad Caro Kane from the Irish News is with us evening Car. evening lads how are you so Tierna McCann Ronan O'Neill Lee Brennan Mark Bradley Hugh Pat McGeary Paul Donaghy and Michael Cassidy have all left the squad since last September's All-Ireland final victory uh, how much of a surprise has this caused around Tyrone uh, probably as a degree a surprise all right um, that that so many have have opted out but I suppose it goes to the last thing that, that James said there in that clip that you know he said these fellas are playing and that's the reality they're not but the, you know I, I suppose anybody looking in from the outside is going to say seven men have left you know what what's going on you know what's the fallout what has happened the throw and falling apart kind of thing that what is going every, on well, you take every one of the seven on their on their own individual merits. Like start Hugh Pat McGeary didn't play a single minute of football last year for Tyrone. You know, Lee Brennan didn't play a single minute of football in the time he was in the panel this year. Ronan O'Neill played the equivalent of half a game. Michael Cassidy played the equivalent of just over a game. You know, the only two that really got anywhere near significant game time were were Mark Bradley, who only made one start. And, and Paul Donaghy, who then lost his place after the Cavan Championship game, his, his appearance in the All-Ireland Final was his only appearance after that. In between, he didn't play any football. He got two starts in the middle of the league this year against Kildare and Donegal. He got uh, three minutes, I think, against Dublin. That was the rest of his league. Um, he didn't get any game time for the rest of the league. So it is, it is it's, it's as simple as that. that you know... Intercounty footballers are selfish by their nature. You you don't get to be an intercounty football unless there's some element of selfishness in you because it's a very selfish pursuit in terms of the lifestyle that you have to lead, leaving behind all the parties and the weddings and the holidays and everything that you have to do to to succeed at that level. And I suppose they reached the top of the mountain last year. The fellas they got their All Ireland medal. I, you know, I was just reading this morning, Ronan O'Neill. You know, quotes from Roman Neal saying, you know, if you asked me, did I win in All Ireland? I, I would nearly say I didn't. Um, which, you know, I suppose leads you into the mindset better than anything else could. Um, there is just no substitute for playing for, for the game time, and those fellas just simply were not getting it. Has there been any sense from the players who left or from the management as to whether or not they tried to keep them? Because it is. It is a while well, they're all individuals and they can all make their own individual decisions. Seven players with that experience all leaving in the space of a matter of months, it can leave a bit of a, a deficit in a squad. And like I think back to say Tommy Walsh talking about Kilkenny and maybe staying on for a year or two at the end because he almost felt he had to give something back to the younger players to be that experienced head there in training, even though he knew he wasn't going to be in the first fifteen. That that keeping a, a keeping players from. 25 to 35 happy is quite often as important in the squad as 1 to 15 and um, I, by the sounds of it maybe I don't know we're Doher and Logan doing that well it, it is very difficult um, it, it's very hard to criticise Fergal Logan and Brian Doher because you can go down that road of saying well they didn't give the fellas enough game time but they won an All-Ireland with a team that wasn't expected they won an All-Ireland mm. last year and so you know they're trying to build a team. I suppose any team that's successful has a degree of consistency about it. They had a consistency about their team last year for, for the championship, for the most of it. The fellas, and I suppose the truncated season as well, um, obviously the shortened league, there wasn't that much opportunity uh, last year for game time. There were, you know, it was a very short league trying to build towards the championship. You know, come back to, they got their league semi-final, so they got four games out of it, but of the 39 minutes of football that Ronan and Neil played last year, 35 of them were that second half down in Killarney where Tyrone were already beaten out the gate by the time he came on. He had four minutes in, in the Ulster final against Monaghan. So, you know, it's easy to say Fergal Logan and Brian Doher should have given them more game time. There's there's arguments as to, you know, a lot of those fellas are not, well, the vast majority, outside of Paul Donaghy, he's the only one that's that would be classed as a young a new player on on the Tyrone setup, like the rest of them are in their late twenties, coming into the thirties. They've been around a long time for some of them, and they're saying that oh, if I'm not getting game time at this stage of my career, like when am I going to get it? 
that's you know and it goes back to the selfishness what what would i put myself through three four five six days a week in garvahi like count up how many training sessions mm. that is over the case of a year for for go back to q pat McGarry. not a single minute of football you know i don't think you know anybody could begrudge those fellas the decision and understand why the th the rest of the throne panel left behind might look at it and think you know it has severely weakened there's not in terms of maybe what they're going to use on on match day because you know Tiernan McCann and Mark Bradley were the two that do, uh, sorry Doher and Logan really made a called upon to change a game the other five might have got a minute here a few minutes there about about of a league game but you know in the heat of a, an all Ireland semi-final or in final they realistically knew that the chances of them getting game time were were quite limited so what's in it for them you know and they've got their all Ireland medal Tyrone went, you know, I think within two days of, of winning the All-Ireland uh, last year, Tyrone were out to 91 to retain it. Um, nobody's looking at them particularly as the team that's going to win the All-Ireland again this year. They might, but there's no doubt they're damaged by it in terms of what they're doing in AVB games, as, as James O'Donoghue sort of alluded to there. The AVB games are where it's really going to hurt them. And we'll only, really, of, we'll only really find out what that impact is, maybe not even this Saturday, but over the coming weeks in Ulster and you mentioned the reaction of the current players like Darren McCurry saying it just felt that it was maybe an easy decision for some of those boys to walk away maybe, maybe they were thinking a wee bit more about themselves than their Tyrone team and the people of Tyrone and listen as you point out there's seven individuals who all have their own reasons and when you are an all-star and you're an automatic selection in that side it might be difficult to get into the mindset of a player who's at every training session with you and isn't getting that adrenaline rush out on the field but Darren McCurry, I guess, would also understand the importance of those training sessions that Kerry are having, or Dublin are having, or Mayo are having, and having that depth in the squad that you need those guys who've been around the block just to be there to put it up to everybody. And, and the loss of that is, is one that right now is probably a little bit uh, incalculable. We just don't know. It's, it's, it's probably hard to stomach. Um, I remember talking to Kieran McGeary the, the day after he won Player of the Year last year, and you know, he spoke about how after the Killarney game last year, Tyrone really went back and refocused on, you know, one-to-one -one football. Um, whereas people might have expected them to go away from the way they'd been playing, uh, they, they doubled down on it. Um, and everything that they did in training from then to the end of the year was one-to-one, -one, no sweepers. It was man-on-man -man football. <clears throat> and that, you know, if you're getting then tested one-on-one, -on -one, by the kind of players that were in the B team at that time, you know, it's, it's rapidly improving the A team and the B team. And that's that's where they're going to fall down um, potentially later in the year is that that quality of what they're doing on the training field. You know, we, we don't, nobody knows exactly what they're doing in the training field, but just from the bare personnel that are there, it would nearly be impossible for them to have as high a standard of an AVB mm. game as they would have had last year. They have never won back-to-back -back All-Ireland titles. I'm sure that is a massive motivation for this year. Uh, maybe it is the new calendar and getting our heads around the fact that it's starting this weekend. It does feel like it's been quite a low-key build-up uh, to the championship. So Tyrone are playing for Mana. What odds on an upset? What what chance and what sort of state are for Mana in to try and take down Tyrone? I think in their heads for Manor are in a, in a decent enough place, but I just think that nobody's really expecting an upset um, at Bristol Park on on Saturday evening. Um, the, the best hope that for Manor might have had of an upset against their own is, is really to go back and batten down the hatches the way that, that Rory Gallagher would have had them playing. And, and you know, Bristol Park was a fortress and has been for, for a wee while for, for Manor. You know, they don't lose there all that often. I suppose they don't host the All-Ireland Champions hmm. there all that often. They're playing Division 2 and Division 3 football. They've had a, a decent enough league. Um, that fell pretty probably, flat by the end. Fell pretty flat. I suppose the, the last day fell away. But, you know, the, the disallowed point, I think, was in Westmeath and the, and the sort of controversy around that. And it left them with nothing to play for on the last day. Um, which sort of maybe affected their, their finishing position. But they're, they're in round the sort of... They were certainly in the upper end of of division three but that's that's a long kind of way from where Tyrone are are operating at there's a couple of couple of big injuries for for Tyrone um Peter Hart and 
and Matty Donnelly both out for the weekend, which are fairly significant, particularly Peter Hart at the minute, um, who whose move to to half back has been one of the most important things that that Fergal Logan and, and Brian Deher have done since they went into the role. But in answer to your question, I don't think anybody really foresees an upset this weekend. One last thing, Cahar. Uh There's been a lot going on in Down this week. Uh, James McCartan, it seems, is going to stay on as manager of the Down footballers. There were all sorts of rumours going around at the start of the week that he was stepping down. There was a, an apparent breach of squad rules at a recent training camp in Dublin. Uh, it's understood that McCartan left the team WhatsApp group following the incident. I don't know if he's returned to the WhatsApp group, but it seems he has returned as manager. Uh, what's been going on here? You outlined it pretty well there. Um, the, the bridge of Give us the juicy the stuff. <laughs> the, the breach of discipline over the weekend. They were they were down in Dublin, and uh, the the bit of the fallout on on Saturday evening. And then after that, um, McCartan was obviously very displeased. A number of the a number of members of the travelling party were obviously displeased and travelled up home on the on the Saturday evening as well. And and then I suppose it was very intensive negotiations over the next few days where where McCartan did. Um, sort of tell them he was he was gone and announced his, his decision to go and then uh, sort of didn't announce it told the told the county board that he that he was going um then left the whatsapp group on on monday evening and it sort of looked you know at where do we rescue it from from here but i suppose it left it left james in a very tricky position to be fair you know to the outside it would have looked like walking out on a team three weeks out from the championship which would be very very sore on him um, to have that that attached to him, I, th- I think any manager probably would have considered their position on on the basis of the weekend. So he's obviously been been talked around to come back in and see it out. But it just it, it's not been a good time in Down at all. Ach, look, Down haven't had a good time for for quite a wee while um, since James was probably last there at, at the start of the 2010s and, and got them to the Ireland final and that. And they've they've fallen sort of fairly rapidly at times since that and it's it's not even so much um this season it's, it's where they go beyond this season um they've you know they've had defections from the from the panel now ahead of the championship the four four sort of key players have have left um ahead of the championship and you know they're looking at going down to clonus it could be a long enough day for them the way things are going at the moment and then I mean, does we James stay beyond the end of this season? After what's happened, it's hard to see. Down have had real trouble getting the manager uh, in recent times. They're going to be in the Talchin Cup as well, aren't they? They'll be in the Talchin Cup if if it if, comes if to they that. Don't. Yep, you, mm. Yeah, if they don't reach the Ulster final, they'll be in the Talchin Cup. So you know whether they would even win the Talchin Cup in the minute. Um, they should be among the favourites for it, but the way things are going, it's nearly hard to see them win it. So. And it's where they go because you know the the underage, the, you know Down's record at underage is atrocious. Really, you know they obviously won the Ulster under twenty last year, which was a a first in a long time at anything. Um, they they haven't won uh, an Ulster minor since ninety nine. They haven't been in a final since two thousand and nine. Uh, that's a long time. Obviously, they haven't won an Ulster senior since ninety four. Uh, and it's and it's where that turns around you know nobody really sees the next two or three or four years well look the under 20s and there should be an influx of those under 20s but i mean there's a serious kind of written branch help needed in and mm-hmm. down at the minute and they're they're just they're just in bother for the next few years it looks like car great stuff as always thanks Nathan. Caro came there from the Irish News ahead of the start of the Ulster Football Championship on Saturday. We've got a brilliant weekend of GEA coverage coming your way on Off the Ball across all our channels here on the radio and on all our social channels as well. We'll have reporters at all the big games. We'll have a brand new weekend review podcast uh, with interviews with all the managers and players and analysts involved on a Sunday evening. And also there is GAA late night copying League of Ireland late night GEA late night with Tommy Rooney and this week Dahi Regan is coming your way 
from half past eight on Twitter spaces. It is that old st- Scott, old style phone in. Uh, you can give your opinions on the weekend's games. Football are hurling. It doesn't matter. The lads will be waiting for you. So just follow off the ball, at off the ball on Twitter. Uh, Twitter spaces, it all explains it there. And the lads will guide you through it from half past eight on Sunday night. All our Gaelic football coverage and off the ball is in partnership with AIB, proud sponsors of the GEA Senior Football Championship. You can check out hashtag the toughest for more.